For those of you who don't know, I'm Maggie, and today we are in the living room. Switching things up a little bit because I wanted a change in scenery, and today is so rainy and so fall, like the leaves are changing, that I just wanted to be in this room. We've kind of decorated for Halloween. We have like the most minimal Halloween decorations ever, so much so that we just ordered some new ones, so I'll be sure to show you that soon. But I wanted to tell you about a couple of new things that I've been loving in the month of September. While I was running around the house grabbing everything that I wanted to mention in this video, I kind of had the thought to change this video up to be September favorites and finds. So things that I bought throughout the month, I don't have like very good opinions on them, just things that I've bought and liked and wanted to show you. So maybe they would end up in a favorites a couple months from now once I've used them and tested them. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. So kind of like part haul video, part favorite video. Let me know, leave it in the comments below. But for today's video, we're just gonna stick with the traditional favorites until I figure out if you even like that new idea. So the first thing is something that I've definitely mentioned on my channel before even potentially in a prior favorites video, but these seriously are heroes in our kitchen. And they're these teeny tiny little measuring cups from the brand OXO. Brian's dad actually sent us these with a bunch of other measuring cups that he found that he was loving and wanted us to have. And boy oh boy, do we use the heck out of these. These are always in the dishwasher. These are always dirty. We have three of them, only two are clean now. And this is honestly what we've been using instead of like a traditional jigger to create cocktails. It has all of the different measurements that you would need on the inside for smaller measurements. So you have it in tablespoons and ounces. And one of these cups is a fourth of a cup. So if a recipe ever calls for a fourth cup of something, I'm reaching for this because it's super easy to clean, throw it in the dishwasher. And you can also use it for tablespoon measurements. So you kind of only have to get one thing dirty instead of getting measuring cups and measuring spoons dirty. For Father's Day this past year, we ended up getting my dad the metal version of these with a cocktail shaker and some other things like a juicer. They've been like hosting a lot more and they kind of wanted more cocktail stuff. So the stainless steel version of these looks a lot nicer and can like sit out with your bar stuff and look nice. It's just so much easier to pour these because it actually has the pour spout. So with jiggers, oftentimes you have to kind of like dump it really quickly so that it doesn't dribble down the side and actually spill all over your counter like you want all that liquid to actually go into your glass and this makes that super duper easy if you're gonna get these I would say get multiple of them because you will find so many uses for them and like I said we have three and that to me is like the optimal number all right kind of moving on to some <laughs> fashion things, if you will. I have realized something about myself in that ever since I've been working from home, which now has been, I don't know, years at this point, because prior to the pandemic and everything else going on, I was working from home three days a week. Things transitioned to five days a week and I still haven't gone back into the office with no real reason to ever go back into the office unless maybe I need to be in person for some event or something. That being said, I dress really casually still when I'm at home and I've been going for little plain t-shirts more than anything. So in a recent trunk club, I asked my stylist for just like plain t-shirts. I did specify that I wanted them kind of cropped. I know a lot of people are not happy with the fact that like every shirt is cropped these days, but for somebody who's short, it is actually great because they fit me a little bit more like normal shirts do. And so I'm really trying to take advantage of it and buy these shirts now while they're trendy and available. And even if they go out of style, since these aren't super cropped on me, it'll just be a shirt that fits me well. The one that I've been liking specifically is from a brand called Open Edit. I think this shirt was like 19 bucks and I have mine in the size extra small and then she just sent me this plain white one, which is great. Everybody needs a plain white t-shirt. But this also comes in black and in green. They just fit so well, they're good quality, they're completely hemmed and I make this distinction because I wanna tell you about another one in a second from Target. But I think if I were to do it again, I would go up one size to a small because this one does look a little bit cropped on me. It's not like showing my stomach when I'm just standing up, but if I were to raise my hands up or something, it would definitely show. And I think just like longer term, a size small would be more versatile. So just keep that in mind, maybe size up one size if you were looking at these shirts, but great price from Nordstrom, can't say enough good things. I also got an orange one that I'll put a picture up of from Target recently that has kind of more like a distressed look, like the collar is like a little bit more distressed, the bottom looks like it's been kind of cut, and I did size up one size in that shirt. The orange was just really fall. I felt like it would be good to layer with in this season 
season and in the winter. And then I also picked up a black t-shirt from Target that is $8. It's not cropped, more of a traditional kind of t-shirt, but just realizing that about myself, like I like having cute blouses and stuff like this, but since nine times out of 10, I'm always reaching for t-shirts. I'll just link a bunch of my favorites in the description box for you if you two are looking for something casual that you could like tuck into jeans and still wear out and look nice and put together. So in that same order from Target, when I got the black shirt and the orange shirt that I was just telling you about, I also got these boots. I'm really excited about these because this is a $40 dupe. I think these are like $38 to be exact for the Mark Fisher booties that are super duper popular. Now you can see this is not like the most interesting shoe in the world, but it is a little bit different from boots that I already own because this part right here comes up a little bit taller. Now I had one friend express concern that maybe it could look like you have cankles or something and kind of cut off the line of your leg. I don't find that it does that for me, but this could be one of those shoes that you definitely wanna try on first before you go all in. Maybe go to the store, see what you think about it. But I can see how this may not appeal to everybody because of that, so just Try them on for yourself. Another thing that's different about these boots than any others that I own is that they actually have this kind of pointed toe, but it's actually kind of squared off on the end. So it's kind of a Western style booty, if you will. And this is truthfully the closest I'll ever get to wearing any sort of cowboy style boot in my life. I hot take do not like cowboy boots, will not own them. You can look back at this video in 50 years and I still will not own a pair of cowboy boots, I promise. It's just not me. And this is like as close as I'm gonna get to this style, which I feel like is kind of in right now. I ended up going with the seven and a half in these, so sized up just a half size from my normal size seven. And I would encourage you to do so. They feel a little bit loose with regular thickness of socks, but I feel like in the colder months when your socks get a little bit thicker and you kind of want things to be warmer, then you will appreciate having that extra space. They're also super padded. These are very cushiony boots from Target. And I don't say that as a knock on them, but I feel like oftentimes their shoes are just like not meant to be the most comfortable and last for years and years and years. And I feel like they really thought through the comfortability of these shoes since the heel is on the higher side. I haven't worn these for a long period of time yet. So TBD on like long-term comfortability, but in the meantime, I really like this style. But I will say, I really hesitated buying these because I really love my knee solo boots. I feel like all my shoes from there are investments, but they last, I've had them for like upwards of three years now at this point and they look brand new. The quality is so good. So if you're hesitating between maybe some like boots from Nisolo Solo and these Target boots, I'm gonna vote Nisolo Solo every single time, just FYI. I like to invest in shoes that I'll wear from year to year to year. If you're curious on which Nisolo Solo boots I love, I've done an entire like fall pieces that stood the test of time video that I can link for you. And if you follow me on Like to Know It, I have a whole slide of all the Nisolo Solo boots that I have. Okay, moving on because I actually have another pair of shoes to talk and about. It's these little sneaks is what I call them. I'm gonna wear my little snakes from Vejas. This is definitely an investment. However, I have found myself wearing these shoes all the time. And so I totally think that they're worth it. I was actually telling my friend Ashley about it last night. We went to dinner and she was like, I've really had my eye on those. I think I'm gonna get them. And I was like, you know, I really wanted them. And then I ended up getting them in a Kicks Nation box. I have that unboxing up and I can link it for you down below if you haven't seen it. But I was so excited that they came because I had been eyeing them too. But they're pricey. These are $145 and you're probably thinking, Maggie, you do not need to spend that much money on this little sneaker. You can find a million different versions of them elsewhere. But I will say, this is a shoe that I'm going to wear and wear out. Like I think that it'll be totally worth that $145 investment in the long run. So I would recommend these. We went to Seattle recently and I wore these all over town when we were walking for like eight hours that day. They were completely comfortable. I know somebody had mentioned in the comments of that other unboxing that they hadn't had as comfortable of an experience with these shoes, but I have no bad Bad things to say about them. No blisters, they're perfectly cushiony. They're pretty supportive. If you have foot problems or like really bad issues with your feet, I don't think these are gonna be super supportive. Maybe get some inserts for them. I like this color. This color, even though to me it looks kind of like a gray, it's actually called khaki. And these are the Campo Chrome Free sneaker for women. And I have mine in the size seven. So this is my true size. I will say if these were any bigger, they would like slide around and be uncomfortable. So definitely order your real size. But. Okay, moving on to a couple of beauty things. In my recent empties video, I talked about me being out of one of Paula's Choice SPF products. It's the Daily Light Wrinkle Defense or something along those lines. It's a little bit more mattifying. But this one is my favorite for these colder months when my skin starts to get a little dry. 
This is the Paula's Choice Essential Glow Moisturizer with Broad Spectrum SPF 30. So this is what I'm wearing today. I did put on some Misha BB cream for the first time and I couldn't even tell you just because I was feeling like it and I haven't used it in a while. So you can still see, I know I have this light on me that's probably making me look a lot more glowy than I do in real life. This adds just a really nice touch of luminosity. It's not gonna make you look super greasy. It's not gonna make it look like you dipped your face in glitter or anything. It's just a really nice, subtle glow. This one, unlike the super light daily wrinkle defense one that I was just telling you about, can be used as a standalone moisturizer kind of glowy primer SPF all in one. So one easy step, whereas the super light daily wrinkle defense, I feel like I must pair with a moisturizer. So if you're looking for a one-stop shop and you haven't tried this yet, and you're really into kind of glowy products, this one I really cannot recommend enough. They're about the same price, those SPFs. They're in like the $30 range. Maybe this is $29. I'll put the exact price on the screen. Definitely a competitive price to some other popular products on the market and Paula's Choice has great skincare. So it's just kind of an all-in-one product that I had to mention. All right, next up is a favorite mascara that I also teased in that empties video, and this is the Maybelline The Falsies Lash Lift. And I am somebody that is very hesitant to switch mascaras. I have a big issue with things transferring on me, mostly to like this upper brow bone area, flaking kind of down below my eyes, and then at the end of the day, it just looks like I'm a horror movie child or something. I have been loving the L'Oreal Lash Paradise for years and years and years, but over time, the formula has just gotten drier. I was dealing with some transfer issues, not major, but I was just ready to try something new. It has a very traditional kind of mascara brush. It honestly looks kind of similar to the Lash Paradise, but you can see this kind of has like a, what do you call that, hourglass shape? And I feel like this has such great staying power. It really does volumize your lashes. And with the way that the brush is shaped, it does a really good job of separating your lashes, which is oftentimes hard to find in this like traditional brush format. But this one just does it all. And it's for around the same price point as the Lash Paradise. And I just recommended this to a friend, like texted this to her the other day because we were talking about it at work. And she was like, yep, buying it immediately. Because I sent her this picture of like my eye, one without mascara and one with. And she was like, yep, okay, you, you, you sold me. Okay, another favorite. This is weird. This is in the food category, but I have been loving the Brazi Bites. They sell these at Costco and they also sell these at Whole Foods. I'm pretty sure you could find them at any kind of um, grocery store near you, maybe. I don't know. But these are like these gluten-free little cheese bites. Let me go get one and show you. All right, they come frozen. They look like this once they're fully cooked. It's kind of like a cream puff, but savory. And also Nash <laughs> loves cheese and is very interested in what I have here. The name Brazi Bites comes from the fact that it's called Brazilian cheese bread. And I wanted to read the ingredients for you because it's really simple. It's Asiago cheese, garlic, tapioca flour, parsley, water, milk, safflower oil, salt, and eggs. But these are just such an easy, quick snack that you take them from frozen. I stick mine in our big toaster oven and you set it to 400 degrees and you let it cook for like, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes or so. That's how I eat them most often. This one is the Asiago garlic flavor, but I like their regular just cheddar one, cheddar and Parmesan, I think is what it is, in the orange bag too. The inside is very chewy and soft and the outside is very crispy. So think about like a really good, piece of like French bread. That's kind of the texture of this, but it's just cheese. So if you're into cheese, looking for something different, couldn't recommend these enough. I think that's everything. I feel like this was a very, very short favorites video. We'll see how long this video ends up being. If you have anything else that you've discovered this month that's similar to what I talked about today, or if you have another brand of t-shirts that you just swear by, please let me know. I'd be happy to explore some new ones because I wear them all day, every day. If you like this video, then like it. Stick around, subscribe, join the community, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.